Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to install Android Development Kit so you can quickly create your applications. What we're going to be working with are these four different files here. Make sure you just go out to your search engine. You can do a search on the latest stable version of the Java Development Kit or SDK I should say, Standard Development Kit. Okay, so right now the latest stable version is 1.7. The other thing you're going to need is the Apache HTTP server, so the latest version of that. Now the Eclipse Classic, that's just in an, an integrated development environment to help us quickly create our applications. It's not required, but it is very helpful. And then of course the last piece of software you need is the Android SDK. Okay, so you can find all these pieces of software simply by doing a search in a uh, search engine. So let's go ahead and install our Java Standard Development Kit. I've already downloaded it right here. Okay, so to install I just double click on it and go through the wizard. We'll get this nice little splash screen and we'll hit next. Stick with the defaults. You'll have to be patient here. This can take a few minutes. And then we'll get a page that looks like this. So let's pay attention to where it is installing our Java. Okay, it's putting it under my program files Java directory. Okay, now you'll get this nice little splash screen and hit finish. Now to test that Java was actually installed properly, let's go ahead and open up a command prompt and we're going to say Java dash version. Now it might come back saying it can't find it or it might come back saying it did find it. If it said that it didn't find it what you're going to have to do is go to your environment variables and make sure you have the proper settings. So the way we do that is we go to our start menu, right click on computer and go to properties. Under Properties, go to Advanced System Settings, and this is where you can set your environment variables. Now, how do you know what to set it to? Well, I'm going to go to my browser here to look at my different uh, directories. And remember, we put it under our Program Files, Java Directory, and you go to the location for your JDK. And under bin, if you double click on there, that's the directory that needs to be contained inside of your path environment variable. So I just copied that and I go over here to my path. I hit edit and I can just hit my home key to get to the very beginning there and I do a control V to paste and now put a semicolon in there to separate it from the other directories. So now that our path is set, we need to set our Java Home. So we create a new environment variable if it's not already there. If it is already there, just hit Edit. So Java underscore Home. And I'm going to paste the same thing, except I'm going to get rid of that bin directory. OK, so now you can test it again. Just make sure that you kill the existing DOS window that you have, and then open a new DOS window so it sees the changes. Next, you want to install your Apache HTTP server. So let's go to our downloads again. Okay, so here we have our HTTP. So there's two different uh, downloads if you Google this. One says no SSL and the other one does include the SSL. We can download the one that does not use SSL. So just double click on it and then hit run. And it will step you through this nice little wizard accept the terms of the agreement, hit next, next again, and for the network domain simply type in localhost or alternately you could say you know 127.0.0.1 that's the same thing as localhost and then your email address so I'm gonna put in here julie.johnson at fireboxtraining.com these radio buttons just stick with the first one and hit next and let's perform a typical installation. See where it's putting it under my program files, x86, Apache software, and so on. Click the install and just wait a couple minutes. You'll get this uh, splash page right here saying it completed and now you can hit finish. Now, the third 
piece of software is Eclipse Classic, so I'll, I already downloaded that. You'll see that this is a zip file, so you can just extract it. I'm going to just copy this and put it directly under my C drive. Paste it right there. Now extracting this might take a minute or two, so once again, be patient. Now I have my Eclipse directory right here. I'll just go ahead and double click to drill down to it. And you'll see if you scroll down far enough that we have this Eclipse application file. If you want to create a shortcut for that onto your desktop, just right click and say create shortcut. So here's the shortcut and just drag it onto your desktop. Let me minimize this so you can see it. There we have it. It's on my desktop. Now our last step, we're going to download the Android Standard Development Kit. Simply go to their website and find the appropriate download. If you go to their website, which is what we're looking at right now, you'll see that we have for Windows this zip file and we also have the .exe. Make sure that you download the .exe if you just want to uh, do the executable. So we're going to go ahead and save and give this a minute or two. And now you'll see that we have this installer R3 Windows. We can go ahead, double click on it, and run it. Stick with the defaults here. It's, it's, it's installing it under our program files. Once again, the defaults, and be patient. You can start the SDK Manager if you want to. And now it shows all of the packages it's going to install. So just click on here, install. And after a while, this will finish downloading. This is quite a bit of download, so uh, you might want to go grab yourself a cup of coffee. Now eventually you'll get to a screen that looks like this. A package that depends on ADB has been updated. Do you want to restart ABD now? So just say yes. And now it says 21 packages were installed, so we'll go ahead and close this. If you want to verify that your packages are installed, just click on Installed Packages and you'll see all this stuff right here. And so now we can go ahead and kill off this window. And this one as well right here. I'm going to minimize these windows right here. And we're going to take a look at our shortcuts. Here's our Eclipse shortcut. Let's go ahead and run it. It asks me where I want to place my workspace. I'll just put this under Users Julie Workspace. So whenever I create an application through Eclipse, this is the directory where it's going to place it. Now if I hit this little checkbox, then it will never ask me again. Okay, so hit OK. And wait for Eclipse to load. We have our nice little uh, welcome screen here, which we can kill off. Now, in order for Eclipse to integrate with Android, you do need to install the, the ADT plugin. So it's the Android ADT plugin. And what you need to do is just go to Android's website, and to, uh, towards the left-hand side, you'll see a, a little thing that says ADT plugin for Eclipse, which will take you to this website. Now, all you need to do is copy this URL, and then go to Eclipse, go to Help, Install New Software, you can plug it in right there. Okay, copy it right there. And you'll see here that you have these different developer tools and you can just say next. Go ahead and hit next again. And then it asks you to accept the terms of the license agreement, of course, after you read the whole thing, and then hit finish. This will take a minute or two. We're almost halfway finished here. And finally we get this page right here. It asks us to restart Eclipse and we'll do that right now for the changes to stick. And there we have it. We're now ready to develop our Android application. 
Well, I hope you found this video tutorial very useful. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.